Thank you for having me. My name is Rebecca Mensch. I work at the Bailey Matthews National Shell Museum. And over the past few years, we have been doing some work on live genonias. So I wanted to share a little bit of that with you today. Genonia is a pool gastropod shell. It can get up to three or four inches long. It is arguably Sanibel's top shell. For a lot of people that are here shellings, the genonia is the holy grail of shelling. So over the past few years, we've started to include a lot more information about the live animals that grow shells rather than just talking about the shells. During that process, we found that there really just aren't any photos or videos of live genonias. So we started this mission to find some live genonia that we could photograph. They live offshore. So in order to find them, we had to take along on a research crew. Enter Dr. Gregory Herbert. Dr. Herbert is an associate professor at USF Tampa. Over the past decade, he has been mapping mollusk communities on the Florida Gulf Shell. We really don't know what is out there and where they are. He was able to bring me along as a guest scientist. He also brings along a lot of students. What his methods are is dropping down a dredge box, it very methodically of points and, and how long it's there, and then brings everything up and checks for what is a mollusk. So he had agreed that if we found any live genonias, he would loan them to the museum for, for us to do research. We were very lucky that first cruise, which was in February of 2018, we did find live genonias. We were able to get some really cool photographs of these animals, and that was just our baseline goal. So we accomplished that goal but we very quickly found other things that were very curious and that we wanted to learn about. We got this profile shot that was really the photo that we wanted, but we also got some other cool photos. Here's one trying to crawl up and over a rock. Here's one climbing up the side of a small enclosure. So you can see how big its foot can really stretch out. You can see this is the, the head here with these tentacles. There's a siphon. Here's this big outstretched foot. This is a close-up of the head of the animal. Here's the siphon. This is a little protection. It, it, but it makes it look like it's wearing a little baseball cap. Here's one eye, here's another eye. Ring. They have these tentacles that stick off the side of the head that make it look like it's wearing a little mustache. So they have this cute, obvious face. We also had an opportunity to learn more about the day-to-day -day life of the genonias. And what we found is that they like to eat lettered olives. And you'll see here, tap, tap, tap. And then the proboscis comes out, which has the mouth at the end of it. And then you see this really sudden uh, response, this weird kind of milky cloud that comes out. I had created this feeding box. There's water flow, but nobody can get in or out. So we had been finding empty lettered olive shells in the system, but you can't prove 100% that it's the genomias eating them. You know, it could be that the lettered olives are eating each other, or maybe it's they're dying for another reason. So we wanted to really get proof that it was the genonias eating the lettered olive. So we set up this box and we were able to capture this video. I opened up the feeding box and checked on the lettered olive and there was absolutely no response to touch. So I had assumed that the animal was dead. I removed the other lettered olives and put that one lettered olive and the one genonia back into that feeding box. And about 15 minutes later, the lettered olive unfurled its foot and went back on again. So it was what I thought was dead was actually some sort of immobilized for about 15 minutes. And then for lack of a better term, woke up again and went back on with its day. At that point, I just left the two animals in that feeding enclosure. And when I came back the next morning, we had one live genonia and one empty lettered olive shell. So that was really the confirmation we were looking for that yes, the genonias are eating the lettered olives, but like most good science in that process, it created all these other questions for us. You know, what exactly is going on here? What's this milky stuff coming out? So this video was actually published by myself and Dr. Liao in early 2019. So if you're interested in seeing this video at any other time, or if you wanted to read a little bit more about what's going on, you can go on to researchgate.net, which is a free website. So one of the things that we were looking into in the past was how do we publicly display these animals? What's the feeding like? How often do they need to be fed? What's the care or the husbandry like? And I'm happy to say that these large male adult genonias are on display in our new living gallery beyond shells. Um, so if you come visit the museum, you'll be able to see these um, on our ground floor new exhibits. We found that they really only like live gastropods and that they're even kind of picky about which species of gastropods that, that they're eating. But they tend to average about one live lettered olive per week.
For husbandry, we found that their lighting actually really isn't an issue. The bigger thing that is necessary is they need to be able to, to bury their soft parts of their body. They need to be able to have what we assume is a feeling of protection. When we've tried just in, in short term in a system without any substrate, so no sand or anything, and it's just exposed glass, they tend to continuously circle around looking for some place to bury into. And then when you change them to a different habitat that has that substrate, the sand or gravel or whatever, they immediately just dig down into it. It seems like they spend most of their time kind of buried in protecting themselves, which is something that's very similar to their prey, the lettered olives. That's what they spend most of their time doing as well. And as always, we have more questions. That video of the incapacitation of the lettered olive just raised so many cool questions. What exactly is going on there? Is it venom? At this point, we don't really have enough information to 100% scientifically call that venom. How are they then consuming the animal? This is a picture of a genonia with its foot engulfing a lettered olive that it is eating. And there's this weird kind of toxic green looking film. Is that something coming out of the lettered olive? Is that something that the genonia is excreting? Is it just digested stuff? Really, what is going on here with the actual consumption, the ingestion of the lettered olive as food? Something that I'm really looking forward to would be the reproduction of these animals. We have not found any descriptions of genonia egg cases or what they look like as soon as they hatch. By looking at the shells of the adult animals and looking at the protoconch, it looks like the animals probably hatch out as very, very large um, hatchlings, but we don't know. When our two large genonians that we have on display are both males, which we can confirm through visual exam. The males have different reproductive organs than the females do. So we are hoping that sometime in the future, we'll be able to collect an adult female and that we might be able to have some reproduction happen. The other thing is growth. We've seen growth out of both of the genonias that we've had, but it's been very different. They're both about the same size. They're both males. They've been in the same systems throughout their entire time with us, but they've grown very different. This one, you can see here, it's maybe a quarter of an inch of growth. Our other one has almost a, an entire inch of new growth. And we can't really account for why there would be that discrepancy in growth when they've had all of the same parameters. So still a lot of questions about the growth of these animals and how frequent are the growth spurts and all of that. This is a rear view of a genonia saying so long and crawling away from us. And this is the protoconch here, this very beginning of the shell. But I just wanted to say thank you for joining. Thank you to uh, Dr. Herbert and FSU for uh, loaning us these animals and letting us participate in their in their research and their cruises. And of course, thank you to the Shell Club. They've always been huge supporters of us. We really appreciate everything that they do and, and the huge undertaking of making sure that this still happens this year, even in a different format. So we really appreciate everything that they've done. And hopefully you enjoyed this presentation. If you're on Sanibel, feel free to come stop by the museum and check out our live genonias for yourself.